have those of you inside the SGA church that have admitted over the years that your church is in apostasy ever wonder why the obedient members have left your local churches? The prophesied remnant people can see what's happening, but the pastors and leaders in the general conference cannot see as per judgment upon them. This is why so many ex Seventh day Adventists have been moved by the Lord to proclaim the fulfillment of prophesied events all over the world. They can see these things happening, but the SDA leaders can't see anything happening in the pipeline, as their president recently said on camera. And so why is this happening to the SDA church? Ezekiel 8.16 might shed some light on this. It says, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Now, as we all know, there are millions of Sunday-keeping churches out there doing this each and every week that they meet on Sunday, but were you also aware that there are dozens of Seventh-day Adventist churches doing this around the world each Sunday as well? And not only does the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church declare in writing that this is no big deal, we see them promoting it out in the open so as to spread their embrace of Roman Catholicism all throughout the church. I'm going to show you two pictures. First, notice an artist's rendition of the pagan practice of sun worship that was described in Ezekiel 8.16 in this picture. Now, Notice this general conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's public profession out to Baal before all the world in this picture. And so one needs to ask, why are the Seventh-day Adventist pastors and the general conference leaders oblivious to this blasphemous and pagan act of rebellion against the God of all creation? It says in Lamentations chapter 5, verses 14 and 17, that the elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music, The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown is fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. For this, our heart is faint. For these things, our eyes are dim. In Ezekiel 12, verses 2, 21 to 22, says, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not. For they are a rebellious house. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have heard in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? And for those that prefer the voice of the founders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church as confirmation unto that which was prophesied and is happening right now in the SDA Church, Notice what most Seventh-day Adventist pastors will never share from their government-approved pulpits. It states this in Christ's Object Lessons, 178, paragraph 4, concerning Babylon, the symbol of the apostate church. He says to his ministers of judgment, Her sins have reached high unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works." In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. And keep in mind, every Seventh-day Adventist admits their church is in apostasy. And right here, you see it being declared, that is the symbol of Babylon. And this next quote comes from Review and Herald, August 1st, 1893, paragraph 5. And notice, if you will, that it also says the bracketed comments were made by Ellen White herself. It says, Of those who boast of their light, and yet fail to walk in it, Christ says, But I say unto you, It shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, seven-day Adventists who have had great light, which are exalted unto heaven in point of privilege, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. 
At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent in their own estimation and hast revealed them unto babes. If you in the Seventh-day Adventist church think your guaranteed salvation and all blessings from on high just by being SDA, then ask the Jews of 2,000 years ago who thought the same thing when they declared stay in the synagogues and ignore Jesus walking among them. Or what of the Catholics in Luther's day who stayed in the churches? Or the Protestants in the mid-1800s who refused the three angels' message is truth? And remember, before you hastily blow all this off, Hebrews 13.8 clearly says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. If Jesus didn't spare them for their apostasy 2,000 years ago, if he didn't spare them in Luther's day or in the mid-1800s, why do you think he will now spare you for standing in apostasy and refusing to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth? Thank you for watching. God bless. (laughs) 